The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. We knew it was going to be an action-packed week, and I'd say it's delivered on both accords, man. You talk about some volatility in both directions, and we're getting it again this morning. We're going to get into Amazon and Meta earnings after the bell last night. Just blowout earnings, man. Facebook, Meta, boy, quite the quarter for them as they trim the fat, they crush it, they bring it to the bottom line. We'll talk about both those equities, but we got to talk jobs this morning. Boy, we got quite a market going on right now in the jobs market. 353,000. Let's get over to the headline real quick before we go through the indices and we do a little market wrap. Hiring, accelerating. This is the front page of the Wall Street Journal this morning. 353,000 jobs added last month. The unemployment rate, 3.7%. Unemployment rate has been under 4% for two straight years. Quite a number, a number that's going to get a lot of attention. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Maybe this one? Nope, that's not the one. It's going to be this one. There it is. This is going to be the number that gets the attention. How about a 0.6% jump in earnings on a month-over-month -month basis? You multiply that times 12, you get 7.2% earnings growth, and there's no way inflation is going back to 2% if everybody's getting paid 7.2% more than they were getting paid last year. Okay. Average hourly earnings, the forecast was for a 0.4% monthly gain. Everybody missed the fact it was up 0.6%. We'll see how that goes in the months forward. But boy, you look at these numbers, man. 353,000 is the headline number when you put it out there. And we got revisions to the previous months to the tune of 100,000 plus. I think it was 125, 127. We'll pull it up. Both the previous months get revised. And we got big jobs numbers, and we have quite a recoil in the bond market and the markets themselves. We kick things off. S&Ps, good news is not good news right now. When the Fed's a little bit worried about inflation, and we're not going to get those cuts, man. So good news means no cuts for the market, which means bad news. Imagine trying to explain this to somebody that's not in the market, right? The economy is on fire, but stocks can't handle that, right? They can't, because right now the chairman seemed like he was afraid on Wednesday and boy, if he was afraid on Wednesday, maybe he had some of this data. He probably had some of this data, right, that was probably giving him a little bit of the creeps in terms of being so confident that inflation is done when you have a jobs market. I mean, folks, you add the 353, you add the revisions, you're talking about almost a net gain of 500,000 jobs just over the last three months than what we were thinking was going to come in. 400, 500, whatever the number, it's a gangbusters number, and the wage number is going to be a big one. Now, we just finished up the holiday season, okay? That's going to play into things as well, but it's going to be an interesting market, man. You see the acceleration. How about it, right? You get the acceleration, this chart. We're just going back two days, man. We're right back to where we were after the Fed announced. Yeah. Two o'clock, you came in at 49.15. You went down to 48.66. We got a 100-point run in the S&Ps to the upside from there, almost 98 points to be exact, to 49.64 just prior to that news event. And we're right back to within about 15 points. And you're right back to where this thing accelerated to at the beginning of Chairman Powell's press conference before he told everybody literally verbatim they didn't think that March would be uh, where they could have that confidence, where the cuts were coming. NASDAQ 100, boy, you're going to see quite the acceleration with Meta. You're going to see it with Amazon this morning as well. Apple, let's check in on Apple. They were a little bit lower. Yeah, they're six bucks lower now. Apple shares from 186 to about 180 in the pre-market. We jump over to Meta. It just doesn't stop with this equity, man. 460, 460 from Meta. You jump over to Analyze tab. You're only looking for a $16 move in either direction, folks, okay? So that meant if you went directionally on Meta, then you were going to have to pay about half of that, right? So you're looking at about an 8 or a $9 premium you would have had to pay to go directionally. Well, if you were bullish, man, you would have paid $9 to get a $65 move. That's the reason why people like playing high-risk options sometimes, sometimes, because you get moves like this. Uh, this is going to be a historic day, even across the market, in terms of the market capitalization that Meta, I keep wanting to say Facebook, is going to add 
at the opening bell, one of the biggest market cap ads ever in the history of the market. You jump over to Amazon shares, they got quite a day going on as well, man. Amazon's gonna be up $10 from 159 to 169. You back it up on the longer term chart. So Amazon's gonna open at about 170. Where are you? Right in the middle of this range. You're talking about all time highs of 188 back in July of 2021. And just like that, man, Amazon trades from 80 bucks at the beginning of last year. And you were a little bit higher. Where'd we get to? Yeah, we got to 174 last night. Uh, just strong numbers across the board for Amazon, across the board for Meta shares as well. And Apple, decent numbers for Apple as well, man. But expectations are everything. Not quite what the market wanted. And Apple's been in a little bit of a slide here. I mean, you're talking about 199 is the all-time high for Apple right now. And you're pushing 180. You're a solid 10% off all-time highs for Apple, just like that. You jump over to Microsoft shares. See how they're trading. Microsoft catches a bid last night on some of the strong numbers from the tech companies. You back off a bit. Microsoft still positive by about 2 to $3. We got the tech stock still higher, which is remarkable when you think about what this chart looks like, folks. Okay, We are down a full point in a heartbeat. Rates are just recalibrating right in front of our eyes by the second. Okay, The tenure, we're at about 4% right now, I think. Let's see if I can find that one quick enough. Probably not going to get it quick enough. Let's see. All right, we'll pull it up after the break. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Let's see. That's not it. Oh, yeah, this is some of it. Hold on. This is going to give us a chart. There it is. That's your yield on the tenure. <laughs> we were at 3.88, and in the snap of your fingers, we're back above 4%. Just like that, man. Forget about March. And start questioning May. Because if the chairman, if you take him at his words, and then you look at this data, how dare they cut when wages are going up 0.6% over a monthly basis, right? Those numbers don't make sense unless they're just transitory. And that's the truth. And the last thing he wants to rely is on data being transitory after it got him in so much trouble in the beginning, I'm sure. Uh, taking a look at some of the charts of the action that we've had since we got that number. Futures, of course, pairing the gains. You see the markets. We just talked about yields spiking higher because we're not getting those cuts, folks. Crude catches a little bit of a bid. Gold's going to have a problem if this is the case, man. We jump around. We haven't made it yet to gold. Well, let's do the dollar first because that's obviously related. Dollar can't trade lower just yet if this is the type of move we're getting in data. And look at that bar, man. That is quite a bullish engulfing, folks. It just takes out every single thing we've done over the last two weeks. The dollar pushes almost 104 right now. We got dollar strength. That's going to put some weakness into gold. Gold still sitting at 2047, but we trade down $23 in that gold contract right now. That's a decline of about 1.1% in the gold contract. We jump over to silver. Anytime you got this type of strength in the dollar index, commodities are going to take a hit. Silver, negative by 53 cents. We jump over to that crude contract. Crude, look at this thing, man. Pretty remarkable. Wait to fill up your gas tanks if you can, folks. Look at that. We just traded from 79.29, and that was literally almost the open, if you recall, on the futures, right? Yeah, it was. It was literally the opening tick on the futures. 79.29, 73.17, just like that. We might see a 69 handle, folks, by the time we get the end of the today. I mean, look at these moves mammoth moves and it's going to continue today today's going to be an important one folks stay tuned we're going to talk some meta we're going to talk some amazon we're going to talk some apple and we're going to talk some jobs we'll be right back folks if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. S&P's barely holding on to the green right now, up by four. You got the NASDAQ 100. We're up by 75 points right now. Pretty remarkable. NASDAQ 100 up by 75. When you got the likes of MetaShares, going to pop about 15% on the open. You get Amazon shares going to pop, what, 7%, $10 on the open. Apple's going to get back some of that, though. Here is your chart of Meta without the action overnight. Now, we're going to pop to 460, call it, okay? This is a weekly chart. We came into the earnings last night at 394. You back things up to 88 bucks, which is just remarkable when you consider, right? Check this out. $88 was where this equity was trading at on October 31st. You're going to get $65 tonight, last night. Remarkable when you think about, yes, this is a 15% move on this equity. But you were trading at just $88 in October of last uh, two years ago, I guess, right? In 2022. And we're going to get 60 bucks Now, when you look at the 10 biggest single-day market cap gains, okay, ever, the market capitalization. Now, you remember when things were rocking in 2022 on some of these, man? Amazon added $190 billion one day. Apple's got the biggest one at $190.9 out there. You go down the list for likely suspects. When NVIDIA crushed it, began the AI craze in May of last year, they added 184 in a single day. Apple, again, it would make sense that Apple's up here often, right? because they're the biggest company in the world, or they were. Microsoft, a couple big days up there as well, as now the biggest company in the world. But MetaShares, man, as a percentage of market cap, I think the biggest number out there when you're talking about these types of ads, right? As in 100 billion plus added in market cap, percentage-wise for your market cap, you don't get these types of percentage pops for equities that are this big. You jump over to the Analyze tab, <coughs> You're talking about a company with 2.5 billion shares outstanding, okay? So for every $10, you're adding 25 billion, right? For every 40 bucks, you're adding 100 billion. And you see they're up by about, what is it, man? 
$65, okay? So you're talking about, yeah, they have the number at about $170 billion right now with some of the action this morning. But how remarkable is it, folks, that this equity with 2.5 billion shares outstanding, and it's gangbusters, man, they got a dividend, they got a buyback in here, okay? $50 billion buyback, they have a dividend, they have a dividend. Imagine in October of 2022, telling somebody that Facebook is gonna come out and start issuing a dividend, and the stock's gonna pop $65 overnight when it was just trading at 80 bucks and you'd be trading at 456. I mean, you say, what's gonna happen? And uh, everything's pretty much lined up well. But 2.5 billion shares is all you're trading at there, okay? So even if the stock was trading at $100, folks, you're at 1.1 trillion right now, okay? Because you're at 450 bucks. If the stock was at $100, then you would have been a company worth $250 billion, correct? It was at 88. Okay, so doing quick math, you're lower than that. What were we at? 220, 230, 230 billion dollars, something like that. I don't think we've ever seen a run like we've seen right now over the last 14 months with what happened with this equity, going from a market capitalization of about 220 billion dollars to now approaching 1.2 trillion dollars in the span of about 14 months. Just mammoth numbers across the board, uh, to put it lightly. Yeah, and some of the numbers, you know, reading the articles this morning, even ahead of the jobs number. Between just Amazon and Meta, you're gonna gain about $280 billion in market capitalization, okay? Yeah, you got Amazon about 7.5, Meta's up 17, both of those pairing that somewhat. I think these. I think this article was up prior to the pullback on the jobs numbers, okay? But they talk about the numbers in terms of what they pulled back on, on employees. Now, here's a, here's a kicker, how about this? Zuckerberg, now he's had quite a wealth appreciation since I mean, you're talking about now, meta shares have almost went up by fivefold, right? What is it? What is 88 times five, man? 88 times five, 440. Yeah, you're up fivefold from the lows, okay? Zuckerberg is gonna get $700 million a year from the company's first ever dividend. I mean, the wealth of some of these uh, tech tech. I want to call him a CEO, but he's more than a CEO, folks, when those shares come from his ownership. Uh, founder, 700 million bucks from a dividend. Just remarkable, man, um, this equity. And what he talked about in here that the market probably loves the most, man, is, yeah, Zuckerberg has talked about that he likes it. Yes, here we go. Here's the quote I wanted. Okay, so they cut a tremendous amount of the employees that they had added, right? That was the big deal going on, and boy, quite a turnaround. Credit to him, man. You got to give credit where it's due, folks. And this just company just went from 220 billion to 1.2 trillion in the span of 14 months. Zuckerberg said he plans to keep headcount growth relatively minimal for 2024 and beyond, despite the lofty ambitions, until we reach a point where we are just really underwater on our ability to execute. I kind of want to keep things lean because I think that's right. That's the right thing to do for us culturally. Um, yeah, it's just quite a turnaround across the board. You jump over to Amazon, okay? Cloud unit sales jumped 13%, easing fears of a demand slowdown. And how about advertising revenue, folks, rising for a fourth consecutive period? And the numbers on advertising, it's just not going to stop, man. Now, operating income. For the period ending in March, this is talking about forecasts for Amazon shares. Going to be eight to twelve billion on sales of as much as one hundred and forty-three point five billion, pretty much in line. The analysts were looking for profit of nine point one two on sales of one hundred and forty-two billion, so pretty much in line. Fourth quarter revenue increased fourteen percent to one hundred and seventy billion dollars. Not bad. They're taking in almost two billion dollars a day. Twice as quickly as expenses is what's going there. Revenue climbing twice, twice as quickly as expenses. Online sales rose 9% to $70.5 Now, what's remarkable is they have $100 billion in revenue that is not online sales. Just They're just everywhere, man. Operating income increased to $13.2 billion. Market was looking for ten point five, dollars right? That's a decent number. Uh, what else do we have down here? Yeah, here we go. Advertising sales. This is the number I want to get to as we got five minutes to go until the opening bell. 
27% to $14.7 billion in the period ended December 31st. I remember talking about this three or six months ago, man. Pay attention to these advertising numbers. The market's going to pay attention to these advertising numbers because they're starting to rival cloud numbers for some of the other competitors in the cloud, man. I mean, you look at Google. I mean, Azure's through the roof, right? But what is Azure growing at? 30%, right? And what are they approaching? Um, bigger numbers than that. It's just not going to stop. And what are you going to have? They're going to have more commercials in prime video streaming service. Okay. Jazzy gets it, man. He's all about the business of high margin ticket items. Talking about AWS. Advertising is the same exact deal, man. Right. They have the infrastructure built every single time. They take in a dollar for advertising. Very little fixed cost that is associated with increased advertising. Just gangbuster numbers, man. And so look for them to pop on the open. Even in the face of a tough day on the markets, we got Amazon shares holding on to about $10 of gains right now. You pop to 174. We're sitting at 169. You jump to Meta shares. It's grading up $63, man. And you jump over to Apple shares. Apple down about $6 on the open. We jump over to those yields. The 10-year, right at about 4%. Openings don't get much more interesting than this one, folks. Don't go away. We'll be right back for that opening bell. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and you got the S&Ps up by seven points right now, trading at 49.35. And yeah, you talk about some volatility, right? And especially interesting in terms of we're right back to where we were, kind of, kind of right after the Fed announcement. We came into the Fed decision at about 49.15, quite the acceleration yesterday, of course, up to 49.64. Haven't seen a day in yields like this in a while, man. You got the tenure. We were at a 113 handle. Thursday at 11 o'clock, folks, a 113 handle. We're now under 112 as you give up a point and a half and you give up basically a full point from where we were prior to that jobs number, man. Doesn't get much bigger than that one, really. You jump to some of those numbers, looking at the number. 353,000 is the number for January, as we talked about there. Unemployment rate holds steady at 3.7%. And yeah, you look at those average hourly wages, right? And what is the average hourly wages? 0.6% on a monthly basis, man. 0.6%. Pretty remarkable. Uh, multiply it times 12. You're at 7.2%, man. That's got to give the chairman a little bit of worry this morning. Wonder how much of this data he had on Wednesday for him to sound, because I was surprised. The market was kind of surprised, right? how he literally came out and said, it'd be difficult for me to imagine that we have the confidence we need to begin cutting by March. Not quite as, as clear as day as that, especially with the important data coming 48 hours after that statement. And what happens? The data comes 48 hours after that statement, and the data aligns with his worries, which is that things are, are, are a little bit more worrisome than they may appear when you only got six months of data and we're getting revisions. Remember, we got 353 for January. Revisions to the prior months were, I think, 126. Somebody just put in the den. It's a great point. You got to keep track of these revisions, man. 126 plus 353. What is that? 479. 480,000 jobs added. The number they were looking for was like 150. And keep your eye on the way. A lot of volatility. Okay, there's a lot of variance that can happen in the holiday season. Keep your eye on that as well. We'll see if the trend continues. But boy, we got markets trading lower on the open. We got the S&Ps giving it up right now. We're just positive by one point. NASDAQ 100 barely holding on to gains. Let's see how those big stocks are trading. Amazon, a little bit of a give up with the market. You're still up by $8.50. Uh, the master of today, we'll call them MetaShares, up by 15% right now. Up $60 to an all-time high of 454 from Meta. We jump around some of the other FANG stocks, Microsoft shares. Up about three tenths percent right now. We jump over to Nvidia. Can't hold Nvidia down. Up one point three percent. We jump over to AMD. Tough deal for them on Tuesday on their earnings. But guess what? They got it all back. They're actually ahead of where they came into their earnings on Tuesday, and that was a tough earnings event for AMD. If you remember, going over some of those numbers earlier in the week for AMD. All right, we jump to Tesla shares. It just never ends right now, folks. Be careful for Tesla. I keep talking about it, man. The multiples on this thing are still bonkers. And Elon is, you talk about a tail risk, okay? I mean, maybe you get in this thing and you cover yourself with options to some degree because do not be surprised, okay, if it comes out overnight that Elon, Elon is stepping down as CEO. And listen, I'm just providing tail risks, okay? But not many times in an equity that's valued at $600 billion, okay, are you going to be dealing with the type of tail risk you're dealing right now with a company like Tesla? But guess what? When you take those tail risks, you can get the reward as well. I just want you to be aware of the risks. It's okay taking big risks, folks. You just got to be aware you're taking them. And I don't think a lot of people are aware of the type of risk you're taking right now in Tesla shares with the volatility that's what of what's going on. Elon can still maintain his ownership of that company. He can still have quite a hold in terms of the strategic deal that incurs, okay, and they can bring in another CEO, and he goes and starts another company that he retains 100% ownership of and pushes out some money where he ends up with more than like a 4% ownership of the company because he's in problems, man, to put it lightly. And, yeah, that Tesla, the reason why I bring up them is because they're recalling millions of vehicles, again, over the latest safety flaw, <laughs> Yeah, 2 million EVs is the number they're talking about here. It seems like I see these articles and I'm always like, wait, that's the last one, right? And they're like, no, this is a different one. This is another recall. Wait, didn't they just do this again like last week? Yeah, they did this again last week, but they're doing it again. 
just never ends right now. Recalling nearly all of the electric vehicles it sold in the U.S. over problems with warning lights. Its biggest recall to date in the latest of a series of setbacks, as they talk about here. Warning lights with a smaller font size can make critical safety information on the instrument panel difficult to read, increasing the risk of a crash. They got tiny font making everybody stare at it very difficult, and then you're crashing as a result of it. 2.19 million vehicles sold between 2012 and 2024. They're going to receive an over-the-air software fix. Now, that's where they don't get enough credit, okay? It's an over-the-air software fix, right? The fix is unlikely to be expensive to implement, but the recall could still dent the reputation. And I would say it is because when you see the word recall, we're not associating that usually with the likes of an over-the-air update, Right? But nonetheless, that's the case. And boy, you talk about the safety problems. And they just had uh, a big one in China. That's, I mean, the headlines just don't stop, right? In 2023, Tesla delivered 1.8 mil million vehicles worldwide. Well, they're 2.19 million is what they're bringing back in the U.S. for safety concerns, as it just does not stop. Tesla down about 2% right now, even with many equities on the positive side today. All right, we got a question from our man Duncan Steve in the den, talking banks, man, talking the XLF. Let's check it out. Look at this run, right? XLF, we're trading 38.73 right now. We've had a run from 32 bucks up to 38. That's your three-year weekly. Let's take a little bit of a longer-term time frame. There's your COVID collapse from 31 bucks down to about 17. Yeah, I don't know. I'd be careful. I'd be careful, Steve. You know, we're coming up here to this area that was kind of an area of resistance, 40 bucks. Nice round number of 40 bucks, man. Yeah. I don't know, it seems like we're coming up there on some weak volume on a monthly. Let's take a look at this again on a weekly basis coming up to these highs right now. I mean, look at some of the volume we had at some of these highs, right? Even the lower boundary, which is where we are right now. Right now we're in the bar from January 24th where you did 544 million. That high was 39.34. You close that out at 38.72, and we're trading at 38.70 right now. You did get slightly above that, and you gave it up. That bar had 544 million, and the weekly bar we're in right now has 220 million. How about that one, man? All right, how about that one? Yeah, I'd be careful on these banks, man. New York Community Bank, right? I was talking to my dad about this yesterday. <laughs> That's a weekly bar for you, man. Pay attention to that one, folks, okay? There's no way this makes sense that this is an anomaly. And everybody is saying it's an anomaly, okay, as in the other regional banks. Their stock prices are saying it's an anomaly as well. But what I cannot understand is how a good bank, okay, this was supposed to be a good bank that scooped up the assets of the bad bank. That means that there were unknowns there that even the good banks couldn't figure out. And there's no way one regional bank is caught holding the bag when everybody else isn't. Okay? This corporate office space, man, be careful. So be careful, the XLF, Steve. Uh, I'd hang tight for right now on that thing as we're pushing highs. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of T. FNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, 
get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. The S&P up by seven, holding on to gains today. You see the volatility there. We actually bounce. Where do we bounce from? We bounce right from the highs of yesterday, Wednesday, excuse me, from the highs of Wednesday on Chairman Powell's press conference. That's basically where the market just hide. A little bit of um, bounced, a little bit of support there. We're up by seven. NASDAQ 100 catches a little bit of bounce. Same exact area, man. Right, right where we were on Wednesday, just after the Fed began their press conference, that high at about 2.45 p.m. Eastern time. If you recall, market drifted a little bit higher until Chairman Powell dropped the hammer, saying literally that he didn't think that they'd have the confidence by March to begin cutting. And yeah, I'd say the market figured that one out as well. We've been looking at that CME uh, Fed watch tool, okay? Now, don't interpret this as the Bible, folks, okay? But it is interesting seeing some of what is priced in here. You look at March, and if you want to take a look at these, man, what's interesting is you can see a week ago where these numbers were, even a day ago where these numbers were, okay? A week ago, they thought there was a 46% chance that they were going to cut in March. A month ago, folks, there was a 70% chance that they were going to be at 500 Five five point oh to five and a quarter, which would be a cut because they're at five and a quarter to five point five right now. Look at how things changed from January second to February second, folks. From a seventy cent percent chance of a cut coming in March to a twenty percent chance, and this is why I say this is not the Bible. There's no way there's a twenty percent chance right now. If you told me that I could put up one dollar to make four dollars, which is what a twenty percent chance is, on the odds that the Fed is going to cut. And March 20th, my birthday, I would take the other side of that trade, betting four bucks to make the dollar, okay? Because that is a lofty number. Now, you want to have some tail risk in there, okay? But you get the point. Now, what gets more interesting is you start going out. Let's go to May. Where's the market looking in May? Well, in May, right now, you're talking about a 57% chance that potentially they're going for one cut by May, 125 basis point cut, Okay. You want the odds that they have two cuts by May, which would mean you go March and May, only a 12% chance. There's about a 30% chance that they don't even cut by May, okay? You get into June and those odds start dropping in terms of the odds that they stay. By June, the market's only thinking there's a 3% chance they have not cut by June. They're looking at about a one out of three chance that they've cut at least once by then and about a 50% chance, 53.4, that they've cut twice by then, 
okay? But it is interesting when you look at where we are now, just to where we were even a week ago. But boy, it's amazing when you go back a month, man, to January 2nd, right? January 2nd, there was almost a 0% chance that they'd only have one cut by now, right? January 2nd, the market was thinking there was a 62% chance that we would get three cuts by the June meeting. Remember this, okay? 62% chance a month ago that the Fed, that the CME Fed Watch tool was talking about getting three cut. I'm just trying to show you how quickly things changed and they can change again, okay? But we have gotten a complete reverberation even with the market in positive territory. territory. Now listen, the market might be able to handle higher yields, all right? We talk to Kevin Hinks all the time. He makes that case. He was making that case when we were at 5%. I said, Kevin, I remember talking to him saying, you know, what's going to happen? How are these equities plowing higher? He said, well, you know, we're adjusting to a world where maybe we can make money at 4 or 5%. And that seems to be the case right now, even if the market doesn't like it, right? You probably make more money with interest rates at 3 or 4%. But doesn't mean they can't make money where we are. An absolutely remarkable resilience, especially in the tech sector, when we have been facing remarkable high rates, especially considering um, compared to where we've been in history. And look at this, man, growth stocks. You can't hold down those growth stocks, folks. Let's see. There it is, Amazon, now up $10.77. They catch a little bit of a lift. You're above 170 for Amazon. All-time highs of 188 out there for Amazon shares. I think Meta's probably skyrocketing. What's it doing? It sure is. Look at that, man. Up $80, man. Up 20%. Absolutely bonkers. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a company now valued at $1.2 trillion. $1.2 trillion. Remarkable, man. And that is going to be one of the biggest market capitalization ads ever, which is remarkable when you look at the fact that Meta came into this earnings event at under a trillion dollars. And you got $3 trillion companies out there, and they are going to own the biggest market capitalization run almost ever, man, as this stock is just not stopping. Market's got to love the idea of Zuckerberg saying we're going to stay leaner for longer as they just crush it, right? We jump over to Apple. Even Apple catches a lift, man. Absolutely remarkable. First move is always uh, not always the move that carries through, and that seems to be the case yet again today. As you get Apple shares, they catch a bid to the tune of $3 on the open, man. Apple's got about 15 billion shares outstanding. So they even add 50 billion, and this is why I say remarkable what Meta's doing, when you think that Apple, just on the open, adds $50 billion of market capitalization because they're just such a large company at this point. Dow, not so much the case, man. Dow trades lower, you're off by 120 points. That's about three-tenths percent right now. Let's take a look at some of the banks, see how they're digesting some of this action. JP Morgan, up about two-tenths percent right now. Bank of America, down a half a percent right now. We jump over to Wells Fargo, down a half a percent as well, and Citi. Down about seven tenths percent right now. We check back in on that XLF. Yeah, basically flat, thirty-eight eighty right now. We check in on some commodities. Crude. Yeah, I said it. What did I say? Maybe we'll get a sixty-nine handle by the end of the show, right? We're almost at a seventy-one handle. We're at seventy-two twenty-eight right now. Wait to fill up those gas tanks if you can, folks. Go contract. Down eighteen bucks. We catch a slight lift. We're sitting at two thousand fifty-two right now for that gold contract. Let's check in on the dollar. Yeah, we back off a bit. We don't quite get a 104 handle, but we are right back to where we were at the end of Wednesday, basically. 103.666. Watch out, man, in that dollar index. And you got to keep your eye on yields again, man. Can't can't stop paying attention to what's going on in that yield market. 111.30 as we got the 10-year, right back near 4%. All right, what else we got pulled up here? <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of jobs. And it's a lot of hiring, and we pretty much got through the news of the day, man. And we'll see where we go from there. But the day is young. As our man Basil Chapman says, you know, the one thing I will say is, yeah, this story out here, if you're not following, man, pretty remarkable. You got federal prosecutors investigating Vince McMahon, right, for sex trafficking allegations. He had stepped down. He stepped down originally. Uh, if you haven't seen what Vince looks like lately, check him out. Because, boy, the journal did him a great service of using this photo from 15 years ago. His look has changed just a bit. If you haven't seen it, man, I'll try and pull it up at the break. Uh, quite the look he's got going on these days. The thing that I found most remarkable about this story, folks, is that the person who's filing these, okay, um, paid a three, got paid $3 million for an NDA, okay, 
And the kicker is, is that in her lawsuit, it says that McMahon stopped paying her after the initial $1 million wire. He was supposed to pay $500,000. Uh, yeah, that, that stash going on lately, Dan. You got to check it out. I'm going to pull it up at the break, folks. I'll give you a look at what he's looking like lately. It is quite a look going on, man. Not the person you'd probably trust uh, with anybody that, that you, you cared about in terms of the look he's got going on. Um, but he only paid a million of the $3 million DM NDA which is astounding for somebody that's worth billions of dollars and it comes back and we'll see man um because this is the the details are pretty tantalizing if you haven't heard them but guess what we're coming back we're coming back with tommy o'brien as well because he's three years old today he's going to make an appearance in the final segment of the show we'll be right back folks the gold report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. This is your microphone. Here, I'm going to give it to you. No. That one's yours, okay? Because it's your birthday. Uh, hey, look at everybody uh, out here. No, that's not mine. That's yours. I know. We have a different one. You were on the show with Grandpa yesterday, weren't you? No. I oh. want I want the other one. The other one? Yeah, we don't have the other one. Hey, everyone's watching us. Ready? Are you going to say it? What's What's today? Uh, uh, this is your earphone. You want that? He's liking earbuds, folks. We just discovered earbuds. Now, you can't hear anything right now because we're live on the air. Who's that? Who's that guy? Hello, 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 Say hello, everybody. Tell me, what's hello, today? Everybody. What's today? What day is it? It's, it's birthday day. It's birthday day. Tommy O'Brien is three years old, so, oh, show him, his wing. oh, he's got wings. All right, we're going to sing you happy birthday. Ready? Happy birthday to you. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tommy. Happy birthday to you. Yay! Three years old, folks. You got to love it, man. Uh, time is amazing. Enjoy every day, folks. We we'll say it all the time. Ears. That's your microphone. Oh, you... my microphone. Yeah, that's yours. Um, uh, say hello, um, uh, everybody. It's my birthday. Hello, everybody. It's my birthday. That's right. Are we going to have a party and cake and candles? Uh, and candles. And ca is Buzz going to come? Yes. Yes, Buzz is going to come. There you are right Buzz there. They got Buzz. Come. I know. All right, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 10. We got the NASDAQ 100 up by 135. We got Amazon shares. What are we doing? Let's finish it off, folks. Up 6.8%. You tell them. Oh, that game that won the win. Yeah. And when I did it to play, 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 when I did it we're singing. Oh, we got a good song going, huh? All right. It's the end of the show. We got to say goodbye to everybody. Say thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you for everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Monday. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Oh, okay. Hi, Tom. I hear you. Basil, he's next. You Thanks so much, folks. Every Friday, every weekend. Stay tuned for Basil. We'll see you.